Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Kelsey. How's it going? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing well. You know, at, at the start of this, I was like, I've been doing a lot of videos about sort of unusual systems that I don't own. And uh, today we're gonna talk about the Wonder Swan, which you know quite a bit about. I'm a little obsessed, actually, so <laughs> this will be fun. <laughs> I know. You've been going on a buying spree for uh, to, to kind of build up your collection a little bit, right? Yes, yeah. Once you said you wanted to do this, I was like, okay, well now that's my excuse to buy the weird <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I don't have yet. <laughs> I know, I do the same thing with my videos too. It's so funny. <laughs> so for this, we're gonna do a bit of a buying guide for the Wonder Swan. And I know a lot of you out there are going, what is the Wonder Swan? <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk about the hardware. Um, also accessories, you've got some really cool accessories. Some stuff I, I don't think many people have seen, <laughs> uh, as well as games. And games, and plenty ga of recommendations actually. Yeah, this is gonna be cool. So I can't wait, let's take a look. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the hardware now, but there's a bit of history with this, right? Especially with Nintendo. Yeah, so this is actually, it's a Bandai console made, okay. by, uh, made by Bandai, but uh, the creator is the infamous uh, Gunpei Yokoi, who you might know as the creator of the Game Boy, which was obviously very successful, right. and then the extremely unsuccessful Virtual Boy. Uh, you know, unsuccessful, <laughs> that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> so uh, he kind of got shamed out of Nintendo after that, but he went on to work with Bandai to make this console, the Wonder Swan, which ended up actually being semi-successful in Japan. I mean, we never saw it over here, right. but it had as much of, as 10% of the market share at any given time. And when did it come out? This was 1999. So okay. the kind of hmm. weird thing about this is that it actually came out one year after the Game Boy Color and it's in black and white. Uh, so there were was a little bit of weirdness with that. People were really expecting another color console. But it did come out in some pretty neat little colors. We have like skeleton green and this this is a Digimon special edition, oh, orange that's cool. and blue one. Yeah, so it came out with some pretty cool colors. And it does have a pretty long battery life of about 15 hours off of one AA battery. Yeah, I heard that, that even though that this is, you know, maybe not the most exciting at the time when it came out, but I mean, yeah, he was really focused on making a handheld that had a long battery life and it was cheap. Extremely cheap. Yes. And a lot of the games were kind of expensive, which was the weird part, but the handheld itself, and even today, is still very cheap. The really weird thing about this, you might notice, is like so many freaking buttons on this thing, right? I know. When you look at that, you're like, how do, what, do you, <laughs> you roll your thumb? <laughs> yeah, so most games you'll probably only be using A and B, and then this would be like the D-pad at one point. Kind of landscape, or you can flip it, portrait, and there's some games where you're just using these right here. So a lot of rhythm games, things like Beat Mania and that kind of stuff use. I think there's a shooter these. too that, that will do that. There is, yeah. and I will talk about that a little bit later because okay. that one is pretty uh, pretty interesting story behind that huh. one. Okay, very cool. So moving on, they eventually got into the world of color. So this is the Wonder Swan color. Now it's still not backlit or frontlit. Nope. Okay. No lights on it, unfortunately. But the screen <laughs> did get better. Um, it's certainly easier to see in the light than a Game Boy Color screen yeah. is. I'm not really sure why that is. There's got to be some difference in yeah. whatever LCD display is in here. But that's a good point. As you were showing me this before we started filming and. Uh, I gotta admit, it was like really sharp, and yeah. it was easy to see. Yeah, like way more than I expected. So there, I mean, it's a pretty nice little. Once you get past the original one, which is fine, mm -hmm. um, it, they get a little bit nicer mm -hmm. once you get to the color. Um, and they're of course just like the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color have Wonder Swan and Wonder Swan Color games. So okay. these are games that aren't going to work on the original Wonder Swan for the most part. There's right. a couple exceptions to that, but uh, are going to be in full color and then you can play the original black and white Wonder Swan games yeah. on the Wonder Swan color. That makes sense, okay. Beyond that, they finally released this thing called the Swan Crystal. This has the best LCD display. It's night and day between the other okay. Wonder Swans. Okay, this is the one you showed me. This is the really nice okay. one. Okay, yeah, this was, there's no ghosting on it. No I mean, ghosting, yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing. And yeah. To be honest, this one's kind of pricey, especially for a console that, you know, how many games can you really play if you don't know a bunch of Japanese? Right. Um, they'll run you about 90 to to $100 for oh, okay. the Swan Crystal, but... So people who get into collecting it, they are always looking for that yes, one. Yes, okay. yeah, because this is definitely the best version of the console. But still not back or front lit, right? Nope. Okay. Hmm. 
but I don't know. It, it hasn't yeah. bothered me. Yeah. I, <laughs> you would think it would, but yeah. It, again, when we were sitting here playing it, I was amazed. I mean, of course, I know we have a lot of lights in here, but I was able to play it easily. So. Yeah. Huh. And this one, the weird thing about this is, you know, the, on the Game Boy, you have like a slider with the sound. Um, these don't have that. You just have sound off or kind of on or extremely on. Okay. So uh, the Swan Crystal had a revolutionary four sound setting as opposed to the three <laughs> on the original Wonder Swan and the Swan Color. But uh, it's still not quite. Yeah. It's not that nice little slider where you get a whole range of of uh, sound yeah, on sound that. <laughs> the other thing I noticed, at least from a collecting standpoint, is the battery cover is that, like in the original Game Boy, it was just a cover. Yes. But in this one, the actual battery, oh, I don't want to break it. <laughs> There's a button on oh, okay. the bottom here that you kind of have to like But the battery is actually built into the cover. So it if you, is. So if you lost that cover, uh, yeah. I don't think you could use your battery. There's nothing you can do with this yeah. right here. So you do, uh, but I mean, it is a whole lot harder to lose for that reason because it locks in. Yeah. It's a lot harder to pull off. And, yeah. yeah. I would have had to break that and I right. think you would have just punched me in the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> eh, these ones are like $20. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not worth punching in the teeth. Not quite, not quite that bad. <laughs> And I guess the final thing I want to mention is that they also do have a contrast setting a lot okay. like the Game Boy. So there's a lot of similarities there. Hmm. Very cool. So is that for it for the, the handhelds? I would say that's it for okay. the actual consoles themselves, yeah. All right, well then let's take a look at some accessories. So on our table here, you have a bunch of interesting stuff with Japanese words that I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> some really, really, really weird stuff came yeah. out for the Wonder Swan. They, of course, were like link cables and that kind of thing, normal, you know, reminiscent of the Game Boy type things. Right. But I have some things that definitely never came out on the Game Boy. Um, very unique to huh. this handheld. Uh, the first of which is called the Mobile Wonder Gate. So I don't know if you know that much about Japanese phones. No. But they all have the exact same input on them. They're, they're all... Standardized. Yeah, they, they're all very standardized. So this was a way to get on the internet from your Wonder Swan. So it comes with a little cartridge, and this will take you to a web browser, and this you would plug into your Japanese phone. Now, unfortunately, Whoa, I don't have a Japanese phone, so I can't actually show it going on the internet, but you can see it trying, at least. Really? Yeah. So it's, it's a web browser, <laughs> it right? is a web Or a bunch of apps and yep, stuff? Yep, it is a web browser, so... As you can see here, there is an actual. Uh, wow. That's uh, yeah, pretty I mean, it, advanced it's, for right? what, 2002 or something? Yeah. Do that? Just wow. about. Huh. So, it, you know, Game Boy Advance definitely couldn't go on the oh, internet. Oh, can you imagine if, it, if they had that? That'd <laughs> right? be amazing. Wow. So, this was pretty ingenious, actually. Yeah, that's cool. A pretty weird little thing. Um, the next thing which is super weird. And this actually, I think we did get something similar to this in the States, but on the PC. This is the Wonderborg. So so when she showed up, she had this, she has mini bags of, of, of Wonder Swans. And this is the first thing you pulled out. You're like, dude, check this out. <laughs> you're like, what am I looking at? And, and you, as soon as you said robot, I'm like, ooh. So this is a robot bug for the Wonder Swan. Um, you can program it and basically use your Wonder Swan as a remote control this really cool little beetle thing with antennas and it also comes with a sweet racetrack I know for some reason <laughs> so you can totally test out your <laughs> your little wonderborg um, so you know it's just a really weird innovative console it had a bunch of really odd things that definitely didn't come out on the Game Boys that were very unique to this system and so this this robot would, would the cartridge you pop the cartridge in and then basically you like use the use the app to program your your little yep. robot huh. that's exactly it that's cool and then the final thing i want to show off is definitely the coolest this is the wonder witch now um this was a consumer dev kit for the wonder swan so they actually sold this it was extremely expensive but they sold this to consumers and said program your own games for the wonder swan so it comes with this blank cartridge so, and then a serial port and a CD for um, the installation software. Uh, it's all written in C. I don't know anything about computer programming, so I am not able to do it myself, but sure. I actually did have a friend who was awesome <laughs> enough to write me a short program and I've got a I have to find a computer old enough, which maybe you can help I me. I may with. have one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that actually has a serial port and probably want, runs Windows XP. Yeah, probably. it needs to be 32 bit okay. operating system yep. and have a serial port and a CD drive. So gotta be a little bit older. But um, you well, could I might be your guy here. Yeah. 
Yeah. So. so this was a way for consumers to get into game development. And there was also something similar on like the wow. PlayStation One in Japan, the Net Eurosa. Um, but this was super cool because they actually did a competition. Um, two years in a row, they did a, a consumer competition for Best Wonder Swan game made hmm. by a consumer, and the winners would get actual cartridge releases. So the game you were talking about earlier, what? Judgment Silver Sword, yes. the most expensive Wonder Swan game out there, that was one of the winners. Really? Yep. Oh my god, can you imagine today? That'd be, uh, well, I guess, I guess today has something like that. It's the indie scene, right? Right. But this is way... Nothing like this, nothing though. Like nothing like to this. be put on cartridges or, you know, they don't sell consumer dev kits for like the DS or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, well like, because nowadays, I mean, and maybe then too, people would hack it, right? right. And so, because you're basically opening up sort of, you know, the, the operating system of it. But that's cool. So it's it's uh, copyright 2000, which might be Windows 2000 or when, something like that. So Yeah, on the back I it. think it says that. It says Windows 98, Windows 2000, but okay. it might oh, yeah, still NT4, work on... Oh yeah, okay. It might still work on XP. That's cool. We'll see. Um, <laughs> and the other winner, if you're curious, was Dicing Night, which is the other extremely expensive Wonder Swan game. Most of the games on this system are fairly cheap. Those two are in the hundreds of dollars now, range. Now, <laughs> maybe, I don't know if you know this or not, but I mean, is there, is there a repository on the internet to get some of these homebrews and stuff? What's or, funny is or? I've been looking into that, but again, I need oh. your computer oh, yeah. to try it out. <laughs> so in theory, I should be able to download Wonder, uh, Judgment Silver Sword or Dicing Knight onto this cartridge, wow. just like they did back in the day. Okay, okay. So we may have to do a follow-up video where we just do nothing but that. Just <laughs> weird. We yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if we'll be able to play any of them, but, you know, that'd be awesome. Right. So these huh. aren't cheap, but if you want to try your hand at programming them, there actually is an emulator for the Wonder Witch. It's called the Miracle Mage. Hmm. Um, so if you want to try programming a Wonder Swan game without dropping three or $400 on one of these, um, you can. Wow, that's cool. But you also have to be running it. The emulator itself will only work on an older computer as well. It's possible that you could actually <laughs> run it through virtual operating system. That's what my friend did, actually. Okay. So you can yes. emulate through an emulator, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool stuff. Well, that's awesome. Well, uh, I guess we should probably talk about games. Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, so in front of us here, you have a bunch of boxed games. Very cool. I can't read any of them. <laughs> <laughs> you can't read Puzzle Bobble? Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, this one's in English. Uh, <laughs> so the biggest thing that the Wonder Swan had over the Game Boy, and of course this doesn't really apply to us in the States here, was that they had full cooperation of Square Enix. So they had oh. tons and tons of RPGs on this system. Hmm. They did some of the Final Fantasies they ported onto this, and they look amazing, but hmm. unfortunately, you know. Heavy Japanese. Heavy so, text. Yeah. These are full color, they look so good, um, but I can't understand a word they're saying, so. Now, are these expensive? Like No, actually, the, the RPGs are very cheap. Okay. So, and they've got like Ark the Lad, and oh, wow. yeah, hmm. I mean, really just a pretty solid roundup of, of RPGs. They also have Clock Tower, yeah, I was yeah. like, what? Really? That's cool. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't know, Clock Tower was originally a Super Famicom game in right. Japan. We didn't get that first one over here. Huh, but that's cool. Yeah. So I guess um, before we get started here, though, so you mentioned Japanese, right? Like yes. The fact that these are, you know, only released in Japan. So, um, you know, out of the games that, that you get for it, I mean, how many can you actually play if you don't know Japanese? That's kind of the thing is a lot of my list of games I recommend here are really restricted to the platforming and puzzle genre because okay. that's pretty much what you can do when sure. you can't read the text. Okay. Now, I'm sure a lot of their RPGs are fantastic. There's quite a few that were Wonder Swan exclusives and never released yeah. beyond that, mm. but I wouldn't be know where to begin to tell you if they're good or not because I can't read them. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. So these right here you do recommend because you don't have to know necessarily complete Japanese. Right. There might be a menu or something like that, yes. but you can figure it out. Uh, there's one or two here where I recommend getting it in box so that you can look at the manual. But. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. But they're. I mean, for the most part, these are all pretty easy to mm -hmm. figure out. So I'll start with Puzzle Bubble since that was the yeah. one I was making fun of. Yeah. And I was able for. to read that one, maybe. <laughs> um, I mean, this one doesn't really require a whole lot of explanation. Right. This is a game that everyone's played. Oh yeah, it's classic. Um, bust a move in the States is what it's usually called, but it's the same kind of game. Um, this is one of the ones that's played up and down. Oh, cool. Like that, um, which is always kind of cool just because yeah. it's different than the other ones. There's not a whole lot of 
things really in any aspect of gaming that are played and mm -hmm. portrayed. They're all landscape, so. Yeah. And in a game like this, you have a complete in-box, and it's about how much does this is the range? That one is a little bit more expensive. A lot of the puzzle ones, unfortunately, are a little bit higher just because you can play them outside of Japan, mm -hmm. so there's a little bit more demand for them. This one ran me about 35. Okay. So, yeah, so that's... It's, it, it, it's, it's something. Not, it's not an yeah. impulse buy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for a good game, you know, and that you're going to play, why not? Right? Yeah, and, and you know what? If you're buying a lot of these in bulk, you can save a lot, because mm -hmm. um, part of that cost is that they have to factor in shipping all the way to the states which is probably a good ten dollars that's that's so if you're buying a bunch of them if you find someone who's selling a bunch of wonder swan games you can probably cut down on that quite a bit the other thing i want to mention here too is that for instance that you got this inbox which you probably assume it'll show up in good condition and the reason why i mention that is because these are fairly notorious these little cartridges because the the pins are exposed yes and so buying loose carts i would suspect could be an issue I, I haven't had a whole lot of problems with them, but okay. I i mean, you're right. I mean, if someone didn't take good care of this, mm -hmm. if it was stored in a garage or something like that where it was subject to all kinds of mold and gross stuff, I mean, that's totally possible. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, cool. So I've got another puzzle game that a lot of people probably know about. This is Puyo Puyo 2. Oh, okay. um, so another game. I, I would liken it kind of to like Dr. Mario. In I that like year. these games. Yeah. yeah it's cool. really fun. And this one was a little bit cheaper. Hmm. Um, and again, like you said, you can buy them loose and cut down on some cost too. I just like the way they look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're going to go all in, right? <laughs> yep. Um, the next one, this is actually a remake of the Famicom game. This is a Genso Ninja Jojo Maru. I don't know if you've heard of that Famicom game, but it's a cute little platformer. Um, you're kind of just like beating up ghosts and it's sort of got like a Donkey Kong feel and that you're going up levels and have to avoid things coming at you while you jump up. You know what? I just realized too that, that these boxes are so small that you can build up a pretty decent collection. It doesn't take up a ton of room. Yeah, I have, I have probably like 30 or 40 games and it's only one little tiny cubicle in my, That's <laughs> my nice. collection. Because huh. you can stack them too. Like, yeah. You know, that's not very tall, yeah. even with two of them on top of each other. Um, and these are all regular Wonderswan games so far. Uh, okay. These are all ones that can be played on both the original Wonderswan and then Wonderswan Color or Swan Crystal. I got you. So um, they're only black and white. These are all black and white, yeah. Okay. And unfortunately, it doesn't do the cool thing like the Game Boy I does. was just going to ask. <laughs> nope. I wish. I wish it put a little bit of color in it when you put it in. The Did you see my color. mind blown whenever yeah. <laughs> John Riggs showed that? I'm like, what? You could do that? I had no idea. The different direction yeah, the buttons different, on yeah. the Game Boy? I wish they did that with this. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a weird one that we did not get here. It's called Taniomaku Tori, which I think means something like seed contact bird. Tori is bird. Hmm. I was going to say, yeah, I think you're just making that up. But no, I, and it's I something with seeds and birds. Okay. Um, <laughs> so this, it's a puzzle game, and you are controlling the path of a water droplet to try to feed plants and have them hmm. grow. Uh, as you get to higher levels, there's like things trying to eat the plant, and you have to kind of like fight off that while also trying to get the water droplet to go the right direction down to the plant. Interesting. So, just a neat little puzzle game. Yeah, you know, I like it when these these companies were kind of messing around with puzzle ideas, mm -hmm. that they weren't all just Tetris clones, right? Yeah, That's exactly. Cool. Hmm. Yeah. And there is a Tetris on the Wonder Swan. Of course. Way, but I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the final regular, oh, I guess this isn't the final one. The final boxed regular Wonder Swan game I have. It's called Buffer's Evolution. This one's cool kind box. of weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's basically like a time attack platformer. Hmm. Um, so the object is to just do it as fast as possible. And there's three different characters you can play as. They're all really weird. It's like a robot chicken and like a weird robot buff lion. And Sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> um, but it's, it's hard. It took me a while to figure this one out. Oh, really? But someone told me that it was a must play on the Wonders one, so hmm. so I had to recommend it. And then I've also got um, two different versions of Gunpei, just like Gunpei Yokoi. Um, this is a puzzle game named after him. This is sort of a, another just weird puzzle game that's not a Tetris clone, like right. you were saying. Um, you have to connect lines to uh, just across the screen. Yeah, from so one got, side like, to the other. Yeah, you've got like yeah. six different little uh, slots were different lines going this way or I know, that way. I know, it's hard to way. describe, but we'll show it on the screen, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know? <laughs> It'll look better than my explanation. So this is just the original Wonderswan version and then the 
Gunpei EX, which is in color. And, and I've played this on the PSP. Yes, this did come out in the yeah. States on the PSP, and I'm actually, I haven't played the PSP one, so I don't mm -hmm. know how much different it is than this. I enjoyed it, so okay. uh, and it, it was, I mean, it was a really fun game, and so I assume and it's very faithful. dirt cheap. Okay. So, I mean, I think this cartridge cost me like $5, hmm. so. And then, this is an awesome, this is probably my number one recommendation. Um, is it for the box? <laughs> I do love the box. I know. Um, this is Rhyme Rider Kerorikan. Kerorikan? I might be pronouncing that slightly wrong. Um, but it box. is, yeah, it's really cool. So the box opens up all the way. I definitely recommend either getting this one in box or getting the manual with it at least. It's actually very cheap. I got this hmm. one sealed for 15. Hmm. So it's, it's a pretty cheap game. Um, but it's a rhythm game kind of like Vib Ribbon in that it's sort of a platformer mm. rhythm game. Okay. And so you're gonna encounter different obstacles as you're like sliding down and to the music you have to hit the correct button that corresponds with that certain obstacle. So the reason I mentioned the manual is because I didn't, when I just plugged it in and started playing without reading the manual, I was like, why, like I'm doing it in time, what's happening? So when you encounter like the weird little a uh, submarine whale looking guy, you have to press a certain combination of buttons as opposed okay. to when you encounter the little armadillo. Like Very similar to uh, Vib, Vib yes, Ribbon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. But this one's super fun, only on the Wonder Swan. I wish we got this somewhere else, but as far as I know, yeah, this, <laughs> that's, that's the cool. only way to play it. And that is a Wonder Swan color game, so you do have to have a color or a swan crystal to play that one. Hmm. There were also a couple Mega Man games, or Rockman, as it's called in Japan. Mm. Um, this one's pretty much just a straightforward Mega Man platformer. Mm. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's challenging and fun, colorful, got good music. The Mega Man ones are not cheap, unfortunately. Of course. Yeah, there's like three <laughs> different ones, and they're all in like the 50-ish dollar okay. range. But they are super fun, and that's something that you're like, hey, I know that from, yeah, that's <laughs> you cool. know, that, that's something that you'll probably recognize and actually have a lot of fun playing. Um, you go back to rhythm games, there's also a Beat Mania for Wonder Swan, um, which is pretty fun. I also kind of struggle with this one, but I'm also bad at Beat Mania, so. And then you have a game here, which I absolutely love. I love this series. Yes, Klonoa, yes. Moonlight Museum, and I believe they remade this one for the Game Boy Advance in oh, the okay. States. Oh, okay. But this is, this one's in black and white, and you know, it's just for the original Wonder Swan, but it's a lot of fun. It's platforming at its best. Yeah, I mean, it really is. It's just it, really fun. I always describe these as a, as a mix of platforming and puzzle, because you don't just yeah. sort of race around and jump a lot, but it's a lot of sort of figuring out how to get up to different ledges. And, and you usually like use your enemies to propel yourself yeah. in different, so yeah, there's definitely a puzzle yeah. aspect to it, but it's a lot of fun. Definitely something you don't need any English hmm. for, which is nice. And then finally, I also have this One Piece Coliseum game. It's just kind of a simple fighting game, but I mention it just because it's it's a fighting game that you can play that's hmm. relatively cheap and that you don't need really any Japanese for. Um, there are some other fighting games on this. Uh, there's a Guilty Gear one, but it's extremely expensive. Oh, so. I bet. Those are very collectible. Yeah. <laughs> huh. So I don't have that one, unfortunately. Well, that's very cool. So that's our buying guide. At the end here, I'm kind of curious, you know, if you were to recommend somebody to jump in on the Wonder Swan, where where should they start as, as far as online? Like, do you just jump on eBay? Where do you... Honestly, you're probably gonna have to go eBay. If you have a local store that sells import games, you can do that. Um, or, I mean, there's also Japanese auction sites. There's Amazon Japan, there's Yahoo Auctions, but a lot of those are gonna need um, either a forwarding service or some oh. Japanese language to navigate. Okay. Um, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. I kind of just recommend eBay for this. Um, most of the consoles themselves, not the crystal, unfortunately, that one's a little bit expensive, but the consoles themselves you can get for 20 to $30 shipped. I've seen, I've ran into them at, at expos, not a lot, mm -hmm. but occasionally there'll be that one guy who has like a little corner of just random Wonder Swan stuff. And usually I'm just like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> what <laughs> you is know? the Wonder Swan? But you do run into that occasionally at expos for yeah. people. You know? Yeah, there's usually like a couple import guys if you go to a large enough yeah. expo and then you can find some of the stuff yeah. cheap there. But I, yeah, I unfortunately just kind of recommend searching for them individually, or if you want to brave some of the auction sites, sometimes you can get a good deal on buying them in bulk. That's cool. 
All right. Well, thanks very much for coming on. Where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Kels Lewin, or you can follow my podcast at Game Blitz Show, or on the website gameblitz.libsyn.com. See how far you've come. I, know, since I can we... say it now. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and take care. If you like this video, then you are probably a fan of obscure handhelds. And I did a video with John Hancock covering his amazing Nokia N-Gage collection. Yes, the, the, the taco, the side taco <laughs> cell phone thing. You should definitely check it out. I'll put a link here as well. And then Kelsey and I did other, other videos too, including a PlayStation 3 buying guide.